fabulous shot. Welcome everyone, it's the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino, and it is CSI's presentation of the Predator WPA World Men, Men's 10 Ball. And uh, I'm gonna be Jim White bringing you the action, very happy to be joined by Christ Christina Tkach. Hello guys. And uh, this is pretty exciting. This is really the jewel in the crown of the events that were played here in the last couple weeks in Vegas. This is a world title event quarter of a million up for grabs players coming from all four corners of the world looking for the lion's share of that 60,000 to the eventual winner and front and center for us Roberto Gomez and Lee Van Corteza two of Filipinos biggest stars Roberto starts with a great break he has a very impressive powerful break in 10 ball yeah, he's not that big in size, but he gets every ounce yeah. into that break, doesn't he? Him <laughs> and Jeff DeLuna, watch out for, his bre for their breaks. Couple down. But he may have nothing but defense in mind on this one, because it doesn't bank into the opposite corner. The eight takes that shot away. Do you think he can cut it in? More importantly, Christina, does he? <laughs> No, he seems like he's playing defense. Yeah, just a little short of what would have been ideal. He just tried to nestle that cue ball up behind the six. And now a big chance for Lee Van. I've, I've spoken with Lee Van over the years. I've had a chance to watch him play for almost two decades. And uh, smiles very easily. I saw him in the elevator the other day leading into this event and uh, he was pretty excited but very easy going but they're they're ruthless when they get at the table she's going to think cut the one ball bringing the cue ball behind seven and two Yeah, that's dark. Impressive shot. 128 players, as I said, have started out. It's double elimination to the last 32. It's a race to eight here in the early stages, too. So I guess a, a moderate race in terms of length. Two rails kick. Now, well, Lee Van Cortez has bought himself a chance. Yeah, he he hit it from a different side than what he wanted to. Probably he wanted to hook it behind the eight. He's gonna play follow with inside. Just like that. Big edge and experience to Lee Van Cortez. Uh, he's been there and done that and got all the t-shirts to prove it. But he knows he's in for a tussle. Important to get those early racks out of the way, isn't it, Christina? But you're always, as a player, you know, you're always you're, you're always tight, you're always a bit nervous, but it almost gets you ready, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you gotta feel this little pressure. Uh, in order to perform your best, sometimes when you feel no pressure, you can be a little bit careless that can cost you, you know, a couple mistakes. Almo Unforced errors. Exactly, almost if you're not nervous, you're not ready. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, been asking me how to 
not feeling any pressure when you play and I tell them it's not possible because if you're competitive you're gonna feel nervous you're gonna feel a lot of pressure it's about how you handle it in the game and now how you get rid of it you just have to learn how to play with it I think a big advantage and uh, a lot of these Filipino players emulate this type of of attitude is that they don't carry any baggage you know they live in the present they they know they can't change what's happened so they only worry about what's yet to come yeah that's a it's a great attitude to have especially in sport sometimes it's it's good to have a short memory you know what i mean yeah real good to have a short memory yeah remembering your mistakes of course and trying to analyze what went wrong but don't really think much about you making a mistake or losing the match you shouldn't have lost. Well, this is uh -oh. way short of way short of speed. Tried to force that around the angles. Yeah. And that's one thing I've noticed on this main table here, table one, on the main match arena, is when players have lost the cue ball, they've been short of intended speed. This is a difficult cut. Oh, what a shot. What a shot from Lee Van Corteza. Had to come with a big one in the end, but he got there. Secures the first rack, and he leads Look Roberto at Gomez, 1-0. He's trying to fill the speed of a table by throwing balls in the rail. <laughs> it's funny. Probably doesn't feel like uh, the balls came off the rail as intended, but he never really got into the cue ball the way that he intended either. But players never blame themselves, always the equipment. That's true. You can never ever accept fault. You gotta maintain that high level of self-belief and confidence, almost like a cocky swagger at the table, and, and you've gotta let your cue do all the talking. You, want, you know what, sometimes I feel like it's not the worst thing to be arrogant on the table, because no. it gives you so much more confident than players that it, like tend to have self-doubts and overthinking. You know, it's never helping on a pool table for sure. Christina, I've seen all the great players in all the Q Sport disciplines, and they're all arrogant. Yeah. He's breaking from a side. Oh, that! If the two goes by the six, I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it does, but that might have been a nice touch on the eight there, just to keep that two in the middle. Seems like it does, does pass six and four, but what to do next? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, that four ball, difficult to tell if it's available. And this is a tricky layout. Yeah, most likely he's gonna play safety. Oh, he's got a nice angle. He might be able to draw this cue ball into that four and six. It seems like. If if yeah. not, he can certainly drop behind it and play a pretty evil snooker behind that six. What if four ball passed the six into the corner pocket? Is there is option like that? No, no it doesn't seem like, no. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, or is it? Welcome to the table. If it passes, he's perfect. I don't think it does, but again, our overhead camera has fooled us a number of times. I don't think uh, Roberto is going to, he's going to envy his next visit. Oh, no, it didn't. It's a pretty good defense. It's only probably two rails kick, short, long available. Yeah, this is where we need a telestrator where you could tell everyone at home the escape path here. <laughs> but he might even have a one cushion escape. Yeah, it seems like. Tough hit and uh, even tougher to get it safe if he hits it. And obviously understanding the significance of this situation, he's asked for an extension. 
very important to hit the ball because on this level it's it's hundred percent you know if you get ball in hand you're gonna run out so you're gonna make sure at least you don't make a false shot oh I haven't seen this coming <laughs> No, I didn't expect the push out there, but that just tells you the degree of difficulty to the hit. Yeah. And um, the only thing that I will say is the five's in a pretty bad spot in terms of what Roberto might have been thinking because Levan's going to be able to get that cue ball down below the five, and he's going to have perfect angle to take that cue ball into the six and the eight. That's what I was thinking. It's not really uh, going to be a hard task to split six ball and eight ball so yeah, and there you go so we'll see if mr gomez made the right choice right here no i don't like his choice now yeah well still work to do but he waited up and he thought he had a better chance to lock up the six. Still work to do. And he'd like to be able to use that 10 to hold position. If he can play the cue ball into that 10 and maintain shape on the seven. Well executed. Well, I guess the choice wasn't right from Roberto. Well, he's, he's not home and dry yet, Christina, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? I mean, the chance that Lee Van not going to run out is so much lower than trying to kick and maybe hoping to get lucky, you know. But what we know, <laughs> it's it's a player's choice. So. Yeah, and you never you never know exactly how the players at the table are feeling in that moment in yeah. time either. For a two nothing advantage. Yeah, took a lot of time on that last 10. There's no way he was gonna let that one get away from him. But two nothing confirmed. This beautiful arena. These sets just get more impressive and more impressive. And CSI partnering up with Predator to bring us some of the best events that all our fans at home and they could ever ask for. And it is, I've never seen so many pool tables, over 300 pool tables in all these convention yeah, rooms. It's unbelievable. If you're a pool player and uh, as an amateur come down and you're playing in a lot of these league events that are hosted by the, the BCA and CSI, and you get a chance to see all your, all your heroes in action, you know, get a photo with them, get an autograph, maybe even a tip. Oh, one ball kicked into the side, but no, well, I say that, possible that two could be available. I was going to say no love on the two, but it's close. No. Yeah, does, yeah. Doesn't look like it, does it? You see it from that angle after the break, and uh, it's going to be nothing but defense for Ivan Corteza here. He wouldn't like that. Very unfortunate. 
And the rule says if you make the ball that you didn't call, your opponent has a choice of giving you the shot back or shoot himself. Very important to outline that because what looked like it was a great shot from Lee Van, well now he's put right back in because he fluked the three unintendedly. And thank you for that, Christina. That was uh, perfect timing to explain the WPA World 10 Ball rules. Well, he's got second prize, I think. He just waves his hand to apologize to his buddy. But only a jump shot available here for Gomez. Oh, he's doing my say. Beautiful. Especially if he finds the gap, and he has between the six and the seven. How nicely controlled was that shot? That's how you wrest momentum away from your opponent. Yeah, what, what seems like a dead safety from Levan Cortez and he was in charge of a table, now everything flipped around. And and really through none of his own Fault. doing. Yeah. It was just a you know, unlucky that he made the three. Yeah. Happens sometimes, it's part of the game. Now does the seven ball pass the ten to go on the side? Or he'll have to to play it into the other pocket. Maybe play follow two rails. To play seven in a corner. Just like that. Oh, too short. He's way too short. <coughs> or too far. If the seven ball passed the ten, it's a good question what he really wanted to do. Oh, it did. Yeah. So he was way too far then. I'm surprised he actually played the following there. Or maybe he couldn't reach the draw, but I think that stun shot would be so much safer to play in this position. But he's good now. Yeah, he's back on course. And again, that Massé shot on the two that really laid the foundation for Roberto to be able to take these. and. Secure his first rack. He's telling you where he was intended to go. So he's mm -hmm. well short. He wanted to play this to the side pocket. So again, when they've erred in position, it's really been just short of pace. They haven't really got the speed of the table down yet. But that's a good clearance from Gomez and a much needed one. He's keeping Lee Van Corteza in his sights. 2 1 he trails. And we'll be back, a short break, folks, and back with more action.
Welcome back, folks. Roberto Gomez at the table, breaking rack number four. Just secured his first rack. And it was a very tidy clearance, too. Well, even with the powerful break that Superman possesses, no friends at the table. The slow, scratching your head walk back to the chair. Well, Lee Van having a shot on the one ball, but the question were to play the two ball or play safety. Well, he's going to be heading back for the short cue. I thought he might try and play off two cushions into the six. He just caught the one a little thick. Perhaps he might catch the left spin a little bit, made the cue ball going wider than he wanted to. Yep. Yeah, 30 second shot clock. All players have to be mindful of it, and they're warned with five seconds to go. Wow. Great shot, but no position on three ball. No, keeps him at the table. So, safety available, or he might try to bank the three ball into the corner, trying to play it in a short side so he can actually play a safety as well or just try to focus on safety and I don't think he got it no he's left the right side of that three poking out but Gomez would have to be careful electing to play safe this way he knows he's bumping that three over towards the corner so he's got to find cover Well, he's going to try and play the five. So he's looking for about, I'd say about a quarter ball hit. He'll spin this, try and flick that five in off the cushion. It's an ambitious shot. Oh, just a fraction harder. And he'd have been there. The one person was clapping, I think, thought it was going to disappear, and it didn't. But he played the shot to perfection, just not quite hard enough. And that's a weak effort as well. All yeah. safeties are short. <laughs> yeah, well short of speed. He had a number of colors he could have tried to duck behind there. Going to try to play five ball again. Could execute it, but luck himself really hard three ball. Yeah, he's got a thin clip on the three to the same pocket. That's really the only aggressive option. He knows the cue ball is coming back down the opposite end of the table, but is it worth the risk? Well, good smart shot. <laughs> Fully intended to overcut that. But again, neither one of these players' safety game has been brought to this match table because there's been a lot of a lot of situations where they could have put their opponent in trouble and they're coming back to the table with opportunities. He's trying to cut it in and just play safety. Oh, try to cut it in. Missed the ball, but <coughs> I believe didn't leave the position. Roberto might have 
very very thin cut on the three ball which is not the easiest shot so probably he'll go just try to kick three rails two rails no seems like he's playing into the three ball Ooh, he actually have seen it more than it seemed like yeah his turn his turn to get a little roll He's kicking at this. He's called the bottom corner nearest our camera. And he's left a big chance here now for Gomez. Used a little bit straight on the four ball, so he had to use a lot of rails to get position to the six. Ensuring to leave the angles key and pool yourself positional opportunities off the two cushions and down to the third one for the eight top right actually that's a funny thing because Roberto a lot of times aim really low in the cue ball but in the last second he hits it like as you said it's top right yeah, so a lot of players might get confused he sights low but strikes high. This is how he sights the cue ball. And it's looking a lot like the first four racks in this day one clash between these two Filipino stars. First four racks are gonna be split two apiece, so now effectively a race to six. Our head referee, John Lehman at the table, helping get the balls out he oversees proceedings here and uh, has had to educate a lot of the referees around the arena that are all taking part and helping with this Predator WPA World 10 Ball Championship. And how about Francisco Sanchez Ruiz? A chance to hold all three world titles in the same year, eight ball, nine ball, and 10 ball. He comes here with that single goal in mind. I don't think. Don't know uh, if that's ever been done. I don't think it's ever been done. I think um, Vu Chachin from China won eight ball and ten ball, or eight ball and nine ball. I think you're right. I think he did win. Uh, I don't know if, did he, if he did it the same year, though. I think he did it in the same year. Yeah. I think he's the only one who did that. I was there when he won the world title. I think he was 16 years yeah. of age in Taiwan. He was very young. Gaosheng. Oops, too much power. Too much power, not enough control, Roberto. We're going to see how long you're going to spend in your chair after that break. There's no obvious problems on the table. No clusters or balls looking pretty open and position is pretty easy. I'll tell you a country that has really emerged as a powerhouse in the world of pool is Poland. I mean, Viktor Zelensky has gone back to back in the Las Vegas Open unbelievable with 190 plus elite players making up that field for him to accomplish that feat. Congratulations to him and uh, the defending champion here, Wojciech Swiszek. 
He's the defending 10 ball champion. So another Polish star. I don't know what they're feeding them in Poland right now, but I'm going to be going to the yeah. grocery store and looking for some. <sighs> there is a, a lot of very good, very strong players in Poland, and it starts since junior, so they actually have a lot of strong junior players, and same as Victor and Daniel Masiol that uh, finished fifth in, uh, in the previous event. Um, I know them since we were kids and they were always very good as juniors as well and then just grew up to men and keep not dominating but he they they show some impressive results as well so I don't know what they feed them in Poland as well but there's a lot of great players same like Wojciech Szefczyk, um a defending champion of this tournament you know, he, he was knocking on the door for a long time. He's very, very good player as well. Yeah, I've been real impressed with Shevchak's uh, play too. Oh. oh, a mistake. Just as I was talking about our defender, defending champion and a mistake from Lee Van Corteza on a very simple shot. Yeah, you would never expect him to miss this kind of shot. And then momentum switches again. And Roberto has a chance to actually dominate in this match for the first time. Yeah. And Guaranteed he'll tone down his break a little bit. And keep that cue ball on the table. You just can't get ball in hand to your opponent. Not at this level. Short. short again. Way short of where he intended. <coughs> well, it's not over yet. would never think you, you're going to see two relevantly easy opportunities missed by these kind of top players in one rock. Yeah, he certainly hasn't left Levan Cortez anything easy, though. He's calling the 10 ball in the side pocket. So I'm thinking three cushions. Yeah, now asking for his extension. Well, this is an exhibition shot, this one. This is close, too. Wow. What an effort. I'll tell you something, though. He was playing that, yeah, and, and he just showed you. He really wanted to get that 10 ball to the bottom cushion. I mean, he, the, the side pocket was in the path of where he wanted the 10 to go, but way short, again, of what he really intended. And thankfully for Gomez, he accepts that Christmas come early present, but that was a great try from Lee Van Corteza. But what could have been? 3-2, Gomez in front.
Well, great to have you back. We vaulted off to a, a quick break there without letting you know. Hope you got back and settled back into your comfortable chair in front of your laptop and you're enjoying everything here. We're at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino and it is it's pool time here in Vegas. The WPA Predator World 10 Ball Championship. You're front and center. I'm Jim White, joined by Christina Tikach, walking you through all the shots here, and we're hoping you're enjoying it. You can see Roberto actually uh, adjusted his brake, his brake speed a little bit. Made two balls on the brake, and pretty wide open position. Yeah, he's kind of seized control of this match. He lost the first two racks, and then a, a bad miss in the last one on the six ball, really, from Lee Van Corteza. Totally unexpected. And now Gomez making a strong bid to go two racks clear himself. Good on angle on the five just to bring cue ball slightly off the rail and create a necessary angle for the seven to go onto the eight ball. Well, Christina, at some point I'm gonna ask you some questions too because uh, you're, you're, you're very young in your career playing pool and with a chance to, to do some commentary and uh, and watch a lot of the players, both male and female. I was the same. I, I started commentating over 30 years ago and I played professional snooker for a living. So um, for 17 years. But uh, I got booted into doing a lot of pool commentary because of my North American accent. And Are um, you actually British? I'm not, no, I'm Canadian. You're Canadian, okay. But uh, I... Uh, I got the best seat in the house and I got to see all the top snooker players playing in my era when I was still playing. You pick up a lot. Oh, you, you do? You see a lot of good players, a lot of players that you normally wouldn't stick around. Wow, another bad miss. Unforced miss. This, like, I mean, he's 3-2 in front and he's probably missed more balls already in this match than he, he has in matches that he's lost. But it's, it's I think it's it's huge being able to sit and do commentary and, and watch a lot of these top players because you never know what you're going to pick up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for me uh, to, to watch so many great matches and actually learn a lot because, um, you know, my dad always says and I always say that uh, you can actually learn a ton about pool, not even leaving your house. And you see a lot of players good players, top players, still come to watch another top players to learn. Absolutely right. And that's what I thought. It's uh, it's nice having you in here, sat beside me, and uh, with a chance to be able to call the shots and pick your brain a little bit. But 3-3. Three, three. Lee Van Corteza, this time benefiting from the unforced error from Gomez. Yeah, it's the match just started, but there was already so many momentums that has changed both ways. These two had uh, a pretty good chat together before they started this match out. So uh, probably a little bit of history. Lee Van Corteza considerably older. Well, he's not an old man, but he's older than Roberto Gomez. It's hard to say, really, you never their know. age. You yeah. never know with them, do you? But I, I just know Lee Van has been around a long time. I've done a lot of events in, uh, in the Philippines, and even I used to do a lot of U.S. Open events in the early days in Virginia, and uh, Lee Van Cortez took part in those. So he's been around the game at least 20 years. Well, good news, bad news, ball off the break, but 
no joy on the two ball. So nothing but a push out. And this is where coming from the background that I come from, I struggle understanding the push out and the theory behind it, you know, where you want to try and lay the cue ball to make life awkward for your opponent, but not too difficult. Otherwise, you get it back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the whole art of push outs. It's, uh, it's very important to think ahead, almost like in one pocket, like chess. As you said, you can't really leave a difficult position because you're going to get it back but not too simple as well to benefit your opponent. So it's, it's very important to learn this, this skill as well. <coughs> well, fortune favors the brave. I don't see any s easy kicks in here. One rail kick, or perhaps he might play Marseille. Too much. And Roberto having ball in hand, and most likely he'll try to snooker him as well. One more time. Think out on the two ball behind seven. Yeah, what even lay think? it up roughly where the nine is. If he could get that, tuck that cue ball in behind the nine, that would be golden. Yes, and a good thing, if Levan not gonna make it, he can play exactly the same shot. Well, seven works just as well. And how's that for judging speed? A little bit more important too that he hits us because I think that 2 6 might be a combination offered to the corner pocket. Oof. Well, not anymore, but he's on two fouls. So, Roberto with a similar type of shot, but if I was him, I'd, I would really try and get it behind the nine or play it a little differently this time because you want to change the angle. You don't want to give him a similar sort of shot that he just played because he'll have learned from it. So maybe try and get it behind the nine this time. Nope, still the seven. But what a touch, regardless, what a touch. I feel like the only problem playing it behind the eight, if you will come up short, you're gonna leave easy kick of the short rail. Uh, that was, well. that kind of was my argument. I mean, he had the That's almost true. the exact same shot. So if he didn't learn anything, well, then he deserved to be out. But still a pretty impressive hit. Gomez tightening the screws on Lee Van Corteza here. Trying to extract that mistake that affords him an opportunity to win the rack. I believe two ball does not pass the seven. So Roberto will either have to play combination or try to look for a safety. Oh, did two ball pass the seven? Yeah, if it did, it, it only had half a pocket, but Roberto must have thought it went. And he certainly left Lee Van Cortez with a chance now. Look at that stroke. <laughs> <coughs> I'm 
That's how you know someone doesn't like using the rake. <laughs> when they've perfected that type of shot, they'll do anything to avoid bringing that implement out. I've said it many, many times in commentary over the years, Christina, I, I see so many weaknesses with a lot of very good pool players when they bring the rake out. It's, it's definitely something that not a lot of players dedicate their time to, especially tall players like Federer. I've never seen him once practicing with the ridge. So. It's a pretty, pretty good shot. And I don't see any problems yeah. on this table. No, not at all. A few racks ago, we we were thinking that Roberto Gomez was going to seize this match and run away with it. Now it's completely done an about face on him and through no fault, but of his own. Just failing to capitalize on the opportunities and a couple bad misses. There's no reason why Lee Van Corteza shouldn't get his nose back in front winning this rack. He's a little short on the seven, but I, th I still think he can hold the cue ball pretty good, creating a good angle to go to the other side of a table for the nine. Well, he's gonna have to smash this one in to get the cue ball up table. Yeah. Follow with inside. Very good speed. Well, he's halfway home. A 4-3 lead in this race to eight. Lee Van Corteza will break in rack number eight. Welcome back again. Referee John Lehman just getting the balls in place and Roberto Gomez has left the arena, so short break. He was 3-2 in front at one point and uh, should really have gone 4-2 in front and all of a sudden he looks at a 4-3 deficit. And Lee Van's on his phone. I wonder if he's getting any suggestions from any of his friends as to what he can be doing. Technology. I actually suggested a new format that once a game you can call a friend or ask someone to execute for you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a game show. Phone a friend. Yeah, you might have, uh, if anybody... Any producers sitting at home watching this and they're looking for an idea for a new game show? There you go. A pool, a pool game show where you can phone a friend and you'll have a list of all the top professionals on that <laughs> list, I'm sure. They'll
Yeah, I'm giving up free ideas, guys, so <laughs> you're welcome. No. That would be fun for, you know, to do some kind of exhibition like that where you can ask like Feather to jump, Roberto to break, you know, someone else to do a great draw shot for you. Now look at the arena here, or just outside the arena, sorry, at uh, one of the convention rooms. There's three of them in play, actually th three for sure, maybe even be more, but over 300 pool tables. And they even have a, a three cushion event on. Just finished the ladies event, Christina, and that was pretty impressive. Yeah. It was very, um, a lot of new players in the uh, in semifinals. Yeah. But the nine footers nearest your picture and furthest away, they're all seven foot bar box tables that the league events are taking place on. And they come from all over North America. I know there's teams from Canada here as well. And Roberto's made his way back into the main arena. And he'll sit and watch Lee Van Corteza try and take this rack apart. Rack number eight, four, three again. To Lee Van Corteza. Made a ball and a break. And from the first look, the position looking pretty good, but it's pretty challenging to get from the two ball to the three ball because four and seven on a way just for the follow. And it's relevantly hard draw shot trying to bring it to the same side of the table as the cue ball. Yeah, well. <laughs> that was fraught with danger and uh, he survived but it was still nothing easy from three to four now it's a it's it's wrong angle and i don't think there is enough angle to go three rails but even if there would be then it would be really hard to to make make it to the four ball It's a pretty fortunate touch on the f on the six ball. He 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 could be hooked. So, but I don't think he can actually see the four ball to make it. Do you? Tough to tell. Our overhead camera has fooled me so many times. Doesn't look like it from that perspective. No, he selected to just hold that cue ball behind the seven and yeah he can he's telling you that the table kind of turned on him a little bit and four ball just rolled to the left i don't know whether roberto can see enough of the four to make it if he can wow <coughs> it seems like he can actually make it Yeah, I'll say it for you. He had a big window there. If you were going to roll that one through, could have stopped it dead and left the five on, but there's almost no excuse not to have position to the five here. It's declaring the five ball is not frozen. It's trying to play rail first. Oh, okay. Couldn't do much in this position. He actually pulled the bank. That's pretty aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure that. Uh that shot was even on. Whether he'd have been able to get the cue ball out of the way, I mean, he saw it differently. And it was relevantly easy safety, but, well. 
Now Roberto having another chance to close the gap and change the momentum again. Well, these guys are going hand in hand towards the finish line. Neither one of them seemingly able to take control of this match, and they both had their chances. It's been a lot of back and forth in this match. Did you get a chance to have a look at any of the the other first round matchups? There were some pretty enticing ones. I know that. Uh, Good friend of mine, uh, Canadian Filipino, Alex Pagalayan. He's up against Victor Zelensky, who just won back to back Las Vegas Open. So that's, it could have been easier first round action for both of them. But that'll be a good match. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anxious moments there, yeah. And 4-4 four, four confirmed. You can smile now, He's but laughing. if this 10 would have stayed on the table, I don't know whether Roberto Gomez would have been smiling in the end. Even the fans can appreciate that. You watch the replay, one of the screens, one of the monitors out in the arena. Yeah, uh, it's always a pleasure to watch Roberto. He's such a character and you would never believe he's almost 50. <laughs> you know, he's always acting like a happy child. Well, I can't believe he's almost 50. <laughs> it's It's always fun to hang out around him. So if you guys hesitating to stop by and take a photo with him or ask him to sign, you shouldn't, because he loves fans. He loves to interact with people. Yeah, it's been kind of a slugfest, this one, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been going on for an hour, and we're halfway through. Yeah. Both in the break. Yeah, kind of. Uh, they just died in the middle. I'm not sure that uh, there was a, the rack was solid there. They just kind of looked like they were in mud. I think it's going to be one real kick. Kick and stick behind the turn ball. Call the one ball in the side just in case. Maybe just a window between the six and the four. But at worst, he might just have to jump over the edge of one of those colors. It's close, very close. He had to do jump. 
and I believe he did not leave any open shot on the one ball. It's going to be a very uh, funny rack. <laughs> yeah, everything in the middle kind of congested and then almost dictated that it was going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a cat and mouse game this one. You see his nickname embroidered all over his chest. They call him Superman. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice top that he's wearing. I think all his shorts he's wearing somehow relevant to Superman. So it's very it's cool. It's a lot to live up to, don't you think, Christina? Yeah. He's a pretty fun-loving guy. He smiles easily, Gomez. And very approachable, too. Very good safety by Roberto. It's going to be a lot of safeties in this rock. I'm surprised he's not trying to jump over the balls. Well, not if you kick like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty messy table, as we've said. So no clear-cut finishes here. The one, two, three, four. If the five goes by the seven, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, quite possibly. This rack may be available to be taken at one visit. But players are just kind of getting break after break and not leaving their opponents anything. Great shot. Almost scratched, but he actually calculated pretty well. And another jump by Roberto. Called the one ball just in case. Well, finally a chance arrives, but he has bumped that seven over in front of the three to buy himself a bit of an insurance policy on that three. He definitely didn't want to bump into the seven that thick. He probably wanted to catch just the side of it. Well. Good shot. Very good shot. Now if the three seven are on offer. But that was a good shot from Lee Van Corteza there. Keeps him at the table. No shot on the three ball, but pretty easy safety, just 
leave the cue ball behind eight and nine, bringing the three ball up table. <coughs> no jump shots anymore available for Roberto in this position. He has to kick to Reyes. and hope for some luck. I've missed it. <coughs> well, Levan finally having ball in hand and an open table with no obvious problems to take a lead in this match again and perhaps turn the momentum. This match is there for the taking though, whichever player wants to grab it. <coughs> Call the nine. It's been an awkward match too. It really hasn't had any flow <coughs> because neither player has been able to seize the initiative when they've had the opportunities. Just keep letting their letting their opponents off. And five four confirmed. <coughs> And we're going to take a quick two minute break and we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, Lee Van Corteza, just one rack in front at 5-4, it's a race to eight. He started off the match leading 2-0 only to get pegged back by Roberto Go Gomez and then it looked like Gomez was going to vault in front and some unforced errors, just keeping it very tight fisted. We see the break again from Lee Van here and successfully completed. And he's got to look at the one. And a chance really here, Christina, if he knocks this in across the bed of the table twice to play the two to the top left corner as we look. 
<coughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty standard shot in position. Oh well. Well, this has been the storyline in this match. <coughs> when it looks like a player is given an opportunity, they just haven't taken advantage. And both of them. Very good shot. All he has to take care right now of is bringing the cue ball not too far so he's not creating way too much angle because I believe four ball doesn't pass the 10. Yes, into the left corner, so he won't want to make sure that he can play the four ball in the opposite corner. It's way too short again. Yeah, he's just shaking his head after knocking that ball in. Just didn't get into the cue ball as intended. I think he's <coughs> still fine to bring the cue ball into the long rail, just like that. And just like Levan Corteza, doesn't hesitate to go behind his back. <laughs> it's tougher to reach this one, maybe. Yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it does require a little more speed control. And I'd rather use my extension then leave any chances for mistake. He threw his extension on the floor not to waste <laughs> the time to go back to the chair. And yeah just filmed it again and Roberto is on his way to close the gap in this match one more time thumps that one to the back of the pocket and 5-5 five five. still difficult to predict an eventual winner of this match If nothing else, he's got the extension back. And we are in the race to three right now. Yeah, as it winds down, again, this is double knockout. So whoever loses this match isn't going home. A little longer road back, though. And when we get to the last 32, it's sudden death. <coughs> Beautiful set here. At the Rio, match table number one. Hope you're enjoying all the action. You can see the host of sponsors involved and putting a high profile event like this together. They adorn our main match arena. It's well, a dry break. <coughs> that would have been his best break if he'd have got one because he's definitely got a shot at the one. He turns it right over to Levan Corteza. And this is one of the key shots in the rack. Just get nicely onto the three, four, 
in the middle of the table from the four to the five. That could provide the winning post. The only difficulty is the five ball because it's not going in the side. It's not going in the corner because it's going to be really hard to play position, right? So he's only having two pockets available. His side pocket, where's three ball right now, and the corner, left corner. So it's very important he is creating right now a necessary angle on the four. Or perhaps play straight in and then just draw. Draw straight back. Yeah. <coughs> I think that's his only option here if he's straight. That's got to be his game plan. That's assuming he's straight. Good speed. Decided to run into the six ball, not taking any chances again for mistakes. He's not nearly as flashy as Gomez, but he's very effective. Well, he'll be breaking in rack number 12 with a 6-5 advantage. We'll see if he can string one together and get to the hill. Two hundred and fifty grand, the total purse in this CSI presented Predator WPA Men's World Nine Ball Championship. 128 players, the cream of the crop. Very few have decided to skip this event. And 60 grand to the eventual winner. It's a, it's a pretty big prize money. I don't think there ever <coughs> been such a big prize money for the world event. Well, if uh, if there is, you'd probably have a lot more players playing because that's uh, that's a year's wages. Yeah, just no flow because the break has been tricky. Even when they're getting balls off the break, they're really not landing on anything. So you're not seeing any break and run outs. Six and seven over on the left hand side, they're gonna provide an obstacle. And the push out nominated. So Gomez will have his choice when he comes to the table. Yeah, it's a pretty tough safety in here, so he decided to turn it back. Of 
Call the 10 ball just in case. Probably he's going to thin the 2 ball, bringing the cue ball back on a short rail. Just between 3 and 9, there is a gap. And I believe 2 ball past 8. So Roberto having an open position, open table. There was a little off, but he got a pretty fortune with two ball landing on the on a long rail. Providing a chance for Lee Van Corteza to execute try to execute a good safety again. And he did. Yeah, everything in the open, and still that six and seven over on the left-hand side. Those are gonna be the problem balls. With the short cue out for Roberto, and he'll be going airborne. It's called in the two in the bottom right corner. I think a lot of times, Christina, they just nominate a pocket just in case. They do. That's, that's what you should do because you never know. And I think he's got away with this. I don't think that two traveled far enough to be able to offer itself to Levan Corteza. Hard to say if he can still see edge of two ball or he's completely hooked. Seems like he can see. Yeah, edge of the two ball to play another good safety. But pretty, pretty easy kick on a two ball, two rails. Or he can, oh, he can see the two ball straight in. Well, as we mentioned, it's it's a lot of safeties in this match. It's an exhi exhibition match for safeties. Kick in one cushion. He's called the right-hand corner. Where's the right-hand side must be? Yeah, that side was the pocket he nominated. He waved his cue over at the over at that side, but that wasn't a million miles away. And he offers his hand to apologize to Roberto, getting the the hook afterwards. Now this will be a chance. Not an easy one, but a chance. <coughs> to say if three ball passes the six to play it in the side. Wow. One shot. Amazing shot. And all of a sudden the table is available. He's just flicked that six into the open. He's still on the three. Having pretty natural angle to go to the four.
going two rails behind the five. It's a pretty good angle. Yeah, one good shot now. Get that cue ball back up to attack the six. And that little shot where he just flicked that six into play. All of a sudden proving pivotal in this rack. I believe there is no more obstacles on the table. Ooh, I think he hit it a little bit harder than he wanted to. <coughs> Let's see if he can actually hold the cue ball now to go one rail only. No, had to use two rails. But he's fine. It's pretty, pretty straight in. the second time in the match. Lee Van Cortez will be two racks clear if he deposits his 10. And he finds himself on the hill. 7-5 now over Roberto Gomez. And we'll be back to see this match conclude in one minute's time. Welcome back, Lee Van Cortez over to the left-hand side of the table to break for the last time in this match. 7-5 he leads, a race to eight. So he can put that break cue away. It's another dry break and wide open opportunity for Roberto Gomez to catch up a little bit with Levon Corteza in this match. It's way too short. Yeah, pretty weak effort. I think he'd be the first to acknowledge that. It's a pretty thin cut, so he might be able to run into the eight, stop the cue ball for the position for the three ball playing in a right corner. Yeah, shaking his head too. I mean, just swirling with negative thoughts in his head. So he'll have to settle himself and hit the reset button before attacking this too. Let's double check. The angle, the aim. Not a bad effort, really. I mean, he's still in the middle of the table. Three is available.
A little bit unfortunate to ten ball be on the way for the five and not really being straight in. So most likely he'll have to play a carom on the ten ball. Yeah, he's already called the ten. So it's almost like playing the cue ball into the corner pocket here. No danger. Just like that, Gomez pulls one back. 7-6, he'll break in the next. No. Oh, WPA rules. There you go, Christina. I got caught up. WPA rules, different rules. The last event we played, that was a win. Not here. It's a ball down. He's still at the table, but that fooled me. I'm going back to the rule book. Right, no early 10 balls. But it's not, it's not stopping Roberto. Still a great Still effort, though. Yeah. And a good shot here, too. I think it might have fooled our scorekeeper as well. Or is he a prophet? Uh, what I do like from Gomez that I'm seeing right now is he sped up a little. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention, that it feels like he's feeling a little more confident, comfortable on the table. Okay, we can do the victory waltz now. 7-6 it is. Roberto will break in the next. But a very... A very sound rack by him there, and one that was desperately needed. So Superman, he's flexing his muscle a little right now. He's got a lot of power in the break. Just has to try and control that cue ball, keep it on the table. Very good break. Yeah, not nearly as hard as he's capable, but he, he exercised in controlling that cue ball. He's got a shot at the two. And pretty wide open position. Don't see any obstacles on the table. He almost looks like he's a man on a mission now. Look at his face. Very focused. I don't think the six ball passes the nine in the, in the side, so does it? Well, it does, but I think he he created the wrong angle on the six. Now he has to play follow into the 
the long rail and back into the six seven. Oh, easier option. The best he's looked in the match. It's Agreed. never never a bad idea, Christina, when you save your best for last. Never as important how you start a match as how you finish one. <coughs> and this is going to be one of the f one of the very few break and runouts we've seen in the match. Oh, what a bad shot! What a horrible shot! And what a what a time to get lazy with the cue ball. And he had so much room that he could work there. Shocking. I, I don't even know what to say about that shot. And he actually had an extension on the nine ball to double think what he wants to do. Because I think he tried to slow roll at first <coughs> and then decided to play two rails and he was stuck in between and couldn't perform his best because he didn't make up his mind. Well, that's about the best he could do, and he's left Lee Van Corteza <coughs> with a chance to seal it. A f thin cut on this 10, but just a massive let off. And for the match. Yeah, you don't want to hear that buzzer going off in the middle of your backswing. Oh. To be honest, I didn't expect that. Yeah, this match has been more a case of what hasn't been done than what has. I think Gomez thought that he was done because he didn't really play the best safety on that 10. And now every chance to be breaking at Hill Hill. And he is. Hill Hill never looked like there was going to be a lot between these two players. But they can laugh about it. Do you speak Filipino at all, Christina? No, not at all. Yeah, you know what I think he's saying is just how, you know, he, he was ready to shoot and then he called the extension because yeah. of the buzzer was going off and winding down and it, it just broke his focus and he never really got back into the shot the way he intended. But Gomez, he knows the break that he laid out in the last rack, he should have run out the rack and just, just a horrible positional shot from the nine to the 10. But now at seven, seven, well, one more good break and it'll all be forgotten. I think uh, Alex Bagulain once said that um, anyone can win when you play good. It's about winning when you play bad. Yeah, it's uh, everyone looks good when they're flying, but ones that can dig deep when they know they don't have their A game, 
because there's not many players can say they just came to a tournament, won a title, and just flew right through the right through the event with every match. At some point, they've struggled, and that's where they've got to survive. Another not really successful safety. Yeah, I'm just not even sure exactly what his intention was because the cue ball never got anywhere near behind the colors. The two was well short of pace. There have been some some miss hits from both players in this match. Like I said, this is just about surviving it and moving on. And Levan called the two ball on the side just in case. Played pretty good safety. Now Roberta has to jump. Maybe calling the three ball. Yes. Just in case. It's actually a very high chance of him making it. Well, this two cuts into the side. But I don't think the four now passes the seven. No, I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, you can play it in any pocket. Oh well, it's, it's a very exciting game we have. Yeah, this is a good rack to decide it. Yeah, quickly calling the extension <laughs> emphatically. I'm not even sure that. Can you see enough of this? Yeah, you can. I was going to say, can you see enough to make it? Not quite sure what he planned to do. <coughs> Did he try to play three rails, but he hit it a little bit way too high? Like the kick and stick here. I think Goma is going to cut the four ball, but play, try to play an effective safety. Well, he did not leave the an open shot, but left a good opportunity for Levan Corteza to, to do a good safety like that. Living Roberta jump shot. He's called the nine. Well, it's a good thing he found out early enough he had no extension available. And the real chance arrives now for Lee Van Corteza. Actually, I think he's right. 
He's saying that he didn't have an extension available. I think he did. I think it was Levan Corteza that took the extension, not Gomez. He might be right. And look at this shot. Well, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, Christina, it's <laughs> there's a little bit more pool to be played in this one. Robert is not looking very happy. No, he's not. No, what, a, what a recovery shot there. Great shot on the seven. And he's just talking about the table, moving on him again. One more good shot <coughs> for a win. Pretty good shot. For a right-hander, a pretty good shot. And this to win the match. And move into round two unscathed. An 8-7 win in the end for Levan Corteza over Roberto Gomez. It was not without its hiccups, but he moves into round two, and Gomez is going to have to fight his way back from the B side. And you can hear Roberto still, still weighing in on whether or not he had the extension, but it's all old news now. The handshake and... For Christina to catch, I'm Jim White. Hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be a lot more 10-ball action coming your way, folks. Stay tuned.